Okay, now we want to uh, go specifically to the section within subpart F which speaks about the deemed paid credit that we've been talking about. There's nothing, there's nothing different here than what, we've, what we have talked about, but I think uh, at least uh, right now uh, maybe drawing one, one picture would be, would be useful. The idea is foreign taxes that are paid by a CFC, which ones get up to, uh, which ones get up to the U.S. Uh, U.S. parent or U.S. shareholder, I should say, uh, through this mechanism. So let me let me attempt to draw draw something out. Now, the first thing to note, of course, is that uh, the U.S. shareholder here is a corporation. U.S. shareholder is a corporation. Remember, uh, we have spoken, I think, several times about the deemed paid credit only applying to corporate shareholders, not to individual shareholders. And we discussed a bit as to why, because uh, we have a system with separate taxation at the individual level and at the uh, corporate level uh, within corporate solution. So that's, that's one thing that's, uh, that's important to remember. Let's say we have Y, which is our CFC, and let's say that it has some, uh, let's say, some different activities, and let's say that some of those activities uh, creates subpart F income of 100, guilty of 100, and other uh, other E and P of 100, and let us also say that uh, let's uh, that this uh, 100, 100, and 100 here are are after foreign taxes, and let's say that there's uh, to make the numbers uh, I think easy. Let's say that the total tax paid to, uh, this is country B, let's say. Total tax paid to country B was 75, and that 25 applies to each one. Under section 960, X is, go uh, uh, under subpart F and under guilty, X is going to recognize the hundred and the hundred uh, up here in income. We, again, we'll talk about it later, but there will be a, a deduction of half of the guilty. So we'll take off 50. And we have income at the end of the day of uh, 150 and then times 21% to get uh, uh, to get our, our tax before credit, uh, which, uh, uh, which should be, what, 31 and a half? So you didn't include the other EMP in the income? Oh, I'm sorry. No, well, actually, uh, I just remembered one other thing. Uh, you're right, I did not include that. But I also didn't include something else that I should have included. Anybody remember what that is? Anybody remember the section 78 gross up? We said that there's 25 of tax associated with each of these and that the 100 is after yeah. the 25 of tax. We include 200 under subpart F and guilty, but we also include another 50, which is going to be the section 78 gross up which is the increase for the deemed paid taxes. And the deemed paid taxes are the 50, the subpart F, and the guilty. The amount of subpart F income and the amount of guilty are after tax numbers. You may recall when we talked about the foreign tax credit that I handed out a, uh, 
a sheet. Does that look familiar? Uh, we showed that the U.S. tax, the base for the U.S. tax in the third column, uh, the country B uh, with indirect foreign tax credit. We said that the U.S. tax, the base for that was after adding back the deemed paid taxes. That's the section 78 gross up. And you have to do that or the numbers don't work out. And we said that if there were not that increase, then everybody would choose to do business through a foreign subsidiary and would never use a branch. That's what this 50 is at the top. Uh, it's the Section 78 uh, gross up, which is of the dean paid taxes, which is these two here. So Section 78 gross up. Now, we then add these things together. Uh, uh, let us say that the, uh, the actual calculation would be a little different than this. But uh, at the end of the day, this is, this is close enough for our, our purposes in terms of what we're trying to demonstrate at the moment. OK, this is what happens, let's say, with the 50 here, the 50 uh, some portion of that 50 is able to be used as a foreign tax credit and reduce this, you know, this 31.5 by, you know, foreign tax credit and get down to some lower number. So we're getting some benefit from this 25 and this 25. What about this 25 here? We have, and I, I, I know I've mentioned this before, we have a participation exemption for a corporate owner, for a corporate 10% owner. When an actual dividend out of that other earnings and profits, there will be no inclusion in U.S. income because of the Section 245 Cap A dividend received deduction. X will not be taxed at all on this, this other E&P when a dividend is paid out of it. If there's no income, then correspondingly, the US tax rules say, well, gee, you don't get any tax credit or other benefit for that 25. When Y pays a dividend out of that other earnings and profits, then uh, X will just have, uh, in a sense, no tax effect. It just receives the cash and no tax, no foreign tax credit, uh, nothing further. The point is that that 100 and the 25 that relates to it under the new system has no effect in the foreign tax credit area.